uh, well, I've asked many times in a seminar, how many of you in here feel like you have some untapped potential and everybody in the room will raise their hands. And it's like, yeah, it's a nice feeling to know I have untapped potential and I could grow. We rarely think of the consequences of it. And when Hoffer talks about that, it, that this talent rusting inside us secretes the poison of self-doubt, that's bad news. And so we don't want to be in that spot. According to Honoré de Blasic, uh, when you doubt your power, you give power to your doubt. Powerful stuff. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to feed the fear. We don't want to feed the doubt. We just have to know what it is and recognize it as such. You know, it's okay. You know, courage is not the absence of fear. It's the action taken in the midst of fear. So when you have self-doubt, it's usually I'm afraid of making a mistake. I'm afraid of... Uh, moving forward. So the indecision becomes considered the safe place. Well, you're, you're as likely to get into trouble by not making a decision as you are by making a decision. So we need to understand, okay, the first thing that's happening with d this doubt and self-doubt is fear. The second thing itself is indecision. And this is waiting for every last piece of info only to make a decision. Now, we've talked with Rachel Yeaman about motivators and facilitators. And I had a, a, a lady work for me. She was a wonderful lady, very, very nice person. She's very facilitative. And she was working with a, a, a couple that had been referred to me as part of my practice. She was showing them houses and taking them around in a pretty good size home they were buying in La Jolla. And they were looking around. And they were six months working with this agent. And... Um, they eventually called me up and said, Brian, we just don't think it's working out. We know we're good friends, you're your friend, and we've been referred to you. And so I kind of said, well, look, come on, let's get together. Let's get together. And I, and I drove over to see them. We went and had a coffee. And that afternoon, I actually took them back to see a house that the buyer's agent had taken them to twice. And I walked into the house with them, and there was this one big hang-up they had in this kitchen. And I said, well, you know, have you considered some other options here? We can do this and we can do this and we can do this and this, this will cost this amount. The truth of the matter is they were just fearful of making a poor decision. They were afraid of making a mistake when they realized there was a couple of other options and there were, it was pretty simple, by the way. Um, they ended up buying the house that they saw months before. Now, thankfully, the market was slow, but there was an awful lot of frustration. My buyer's agent didn't know that she lost that client and their future referrals and their future endorsement by being nice, by actually feeding their indecision. They were just afraid of making a mistake. And they just needed to be know, hey, this, this is a good decision. You, there's a reason you guys like this place. And the one hang up you have, well, here's some solutions to think about it a little bit differently. And the next thing you know, not only are they purchasing that home, but they became great advocates back again for me. And they would say, now don't work with Brian's team. You need to work with Brian personally. That's how they would refer me. This really lovely lady who was being really careful and really facilitative, not only lost them as a client, lost their endorsement. Indecision. Indecision. When people are being indecisive, facilitating their indecision is not of help. Thanks for watching. If you want more tips on how to think, feel, and do better, check out these videos too. Oh, by the way, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave us a like if you enjoy the content.